Okay. Good morning, friends and family. As usual, it's a pleasure to uh, be with you once again and uh, to fulfill my promise <laughs> that I uh, made last night in terms of uh, this teaching on dreams that reveal uh, soul ties. So <clears throat> I'm just waiting to for some folks to get on board. I was supposed to be on from 9.30, but uh, I had some little issues that I had to work out with uh, my connection. It's nothing major, just some connections. I had kind of cross-wired. <clears throat> Excuse me, nevertheless, uh, we're up and running. And today, uh, we're going to do a brief teaching. Now, seriously, this is going to be brief. <laughs> this is going to be brief. And this teaching is on soul ties, but it's dreams that will indicate that their soul ties or there's a spirit in your life that's uh, perpetuating this evil of not being able to uh, get over someone. Now, there are different types. There are different types of soul ties. And this is something that we really need to make clear because I'm going to be speaking specifically to, to one type this morning. There are soul ties in business. There are soul ties in uh, relationships and you name it. But the one that I'm going to talk about this morning as it relates to dream is dealing with soul ties that deal with sexual or intimacy with another person. How is it? And I know many of you, or a lot of you have had that experience where you and a person would have ended a relationship, but it seems as if uh, you, you cannot get rid of them mentally. You cannot get rid of them uh, no matter what you do. Even if you decide to date someone else, you still have this issue uh, with them being on your mind. That could be an ex-husband, an ex-wife, uh, a former boyfriend, girlfriend, or what have you. So this teaching today is to show you the spiritual components involved. The spiritual components involved. But like with all my teachings, though, we're going to give the scriptural uh, foundation, the root cause of why this is happening to you, and we're going to end on how you're able to break it, how you can bring this all to an end so that you can now move on with your life. And many people are in this position right now where they're stuck. They're probably even married to people that they don't want to be with, but they only did it just so in an attempt to get rid of the other party that they quote unquote so attached to. The Bible refers to that, and we're going to speak a lot about it as inordinate affection, inordinate uh, affection. And we're going to get really, really into that. And I really need to get started because I have an appointment in a little bit. But anyway, we're going to deal with that. All right. So our topic today is uh, dealing with uh, dreams that reveal soul ties. And we're specifically talking about the soul ties that are created as the as a result of intimacy or sexual relations all right so a soul tie i have my little thing here I'm write this down a soul tie is a spiritual connection let's be clear here now remember we're talking about sexual soul ties a soul tie is a spiritual connection that is forged or formed through sexual relationships mm -hmm. It is formed through sexual relationships. Now, there's a word I'm going to use uh, uh, here, and it's known as covenants. I always talk about it. So when you have sex with someone, when you engage sexually with them, you are, in fact, forging a covenant with them. So let's go to a particular scripture that I want to, I want to read here that is going to be found in uh, Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, all right? I've read this to you before, Deuteronomy chapter 7. And uh, let's go to, let's start at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we're going to start at verse 1. And it says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, all right? It says, to possess it and had cast out many nations before thee 
And these are the nations that he would have cast out, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, these seven nations greater and mightier than you. So he says, on your journey to the promised land, God, the, the spirit, the invisible being, will go ahead of you. And he's going to be the one responsible for eliminating your enemies or removing them out of the promised land so that you, the children of Israel, will now be the not only inheritors, but the inhabitants of the promised land. But in the next scripture, it says here in verse 2, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. So when God has delivered them unto you, you, Israel, must smite, or you must kill them and utterly destroy them. Now, this is amazing because what he's going to say next have so much to do with what we're going to talk about today with soul ties. So he says, Moses, tell the children of Israel, I've already told you I've given them the land, even though the land is currently occupied by the Canaanites, which in combination is seven nation, nations. And he says, tell them I'm going to go ahead of them and I'm going to disable them spiritually so that Israel will have an advantage over them physically. So I'm basically empowering Israel to uh, overcome the Canaanites. Now, watch the first set of instructions that he's going to give them. He says, thou shall make no covenants, listen to this carefully now, with them. Do not make no agreements. And that is in every aspect of the word. Do not make no covenant with them in business. Do not join them in marriages. Do not join them sexually. Don't do any of that. Because as we're about to get into here, you're going to see soul ties. A lot of people, when they speak about it, they just look at the, the sexual aspect of it and not getting over the person. But I take it from me, and you're going to see that this morning, soul ties run so deep because it's on a spiritual level. So you, you could try distancing yourself from that person all you want. You could marry somebody else and think you're going to get over them. You could probably go live on the other side of the world. The spiritual connection that was established through the intercourse, that was the covenant that was made that gave that spirit the right to connect, to keep you two together, or to keep one party more interested in the other party. We're going to see that, okay? So he says to them, you shall make no covenants with them. This is verse 2 of Deuteronomy 7. You should make no covenants with them, nor show mercy unto them. Don't be no friends with them. Shut them down immediately. Verse 3 of Deuteronomy 7 says, neither shall thou make marriages. So he's getting specific now. He said, make no covenants. He's being general. Now he's about to get into the specifics. Do not tie yourself to these people. I don't care how beautiful they are. I don't care how educated they are. The core of these people are evil because they serve other gods. So in verse 2 of Deuteronomy 7, he says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenants with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall thou, verse 3, neither shall thou make marriages with them. Now he's going to become even more specific. In case you're a little confused, you don't know what a marriage is between a man and a woman. He's about to make it clear. He says, Neither shall thou make marriages with them. He says, Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto their son, nor their daughter shall thou take unto your sons. Then he tells them why in verse 4 of Deuteronomy 7. He says, For they will turn away thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods, small g, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Now, this is interesting here now because what I love about the Bible is, and that's why I kind of picked the scripture and many others that will correlate with this, is that the Bible, whether you have observed it or not, is always addressing things 
from a spiritual level. And that's what every church of Jesus Christ should be about. Yes, I hear what you're telling me. I'm listening to your story. I see the fuss in between the husband and wife. I see the divorce over here. I hear about you trying to get into college, but you don't have the funds. I hear all of that as a preacher, as a minister of the gospel. But as an enforcer of the constitution of God, which is the scriptures, while you're telling me that, I am conditioned as a representative of the kingdom to look at the spiritual legal aspect of what you're telling me, meaning that while you're telling me the physical parts of it, and, and this is how a real Bible student should see things, what, what are the components behind this? See, that's a person who really, I mean, have upgraded their walk with God. They're not saying to you, if you came to them and say, oh, uh, my husband hit me. No, go get a divorce. See, immediately you jump in the flesh. Oh, no, make sure everything is in your name. No. Tell me some more about what's happening here because a, a true counselor who is, I mean, really basing everything on the scriptures, and if you're basing it on that, you must be taking it from a spiritual aspect. So rather than saying, oh, go get a divorce, tell me more about his family. In fact, tell me more about your family. But, sir, I'm here to talk about this man did something bad to me and, and I need to go. I need to, should I get a lawyer? Hold off. Hold off another second. Just tell me. See, because why we want to know this? Because we want to get on the spiritual level or as to what is really behind what's being manifested. And this is why I love the scripture so much. Because like in this teaching... It's going to reveal the core of what a soul tie really is. And the truth is, I'm going to jump over to myself anyway. It, it's a spirit. And that spirit has knitted the two spirits together. In this case, sexually is how it initially entered. And from that day forward, the spirit now is now levying inordinate affection, levying lust, levying abnormal desires, obsessive desires for the other party. But we're going to get into all that. So, so here we see now God is saying to them, listen, he didn't say go in there and take their gold, take their money. He didn't give them that as first instruction. He says, no, the first thing you need to deal, deal with is to protect the spiritual nature and culture of Israel by not allowing the Canaanites who do not serve the God that you serve to pollute what you believe in the God that you serve. That's the first thing. And that's one of the things that we need to look at too, especially those of you who are planning to get married. You know, you got to look beyond the job status. You got to look beyond the tall, dark, and handsome. You got to look beyond the, the breasts, the hips, the small waist. All of that is superficial. In fact, all of that is just reeling you in and put a hook in your jaw. And then you find out, how did I get in this? And that was our spirit manipulating that situation from day one. And the minute sexual intercourse was introduced to that relationship, then that soul tie began to run its course from that point forward. This is going to be powerful, but I love this already. I love this already. So I've just shown you that in the book of Deuteronomy. Now I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, because we're going to put some more meat on this before we really get into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse uh, 13 to verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to read from verse uh, 13 to verse verses 20. I'm going to take my time today. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 13, it says, uh, well, actually, let's start from verse 15. Verse 15 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Know you not, or know ye not, that your bodies, he's talking about the physical body, are the members of Christ. Shall then, shall I then take members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? You know what a harlot is, right? A prostitute. Okay, watch this now. Watch this now. Make them the members of a harlot. And then he says, God forbid. Verse 16 of 1 Corinthians 6. What know ye not, he says, what, sorry, know ye not that he which 
is joined, this, this is key here, he which is joined to a harlot or he that have sexual relationship with a prostitute. Now, even though he's using the word prostitute here, the truth is this is a principle. This is a spiritual principle. And it's, and it's building on my point that he, whomever you join in terms of having sexual relationships with, now you ended to get pleasure or whatever the case may be, right? But more is being created in that union on a spiritual plane than what you know. Oh, yeah. So he says here very, very clearly. He says in verse 16, What? Know you not that which is joined to a harlot is one body? The two, said he, shall become one flesh. Now let's, let's, let's break this baby down just a little bit. Now let's, let's try to put some sense in this. Just about everybody has had sex outside of marriage. So don't play safe like you were safe forever here, okay? Now, you don't recall when you had relations with that person, your flesh and their flesh absorb into each other and you all become one person. That didn't happen, right? So, so clearly we couldn't mean that because we did not see that happen. Now, if you take it to a spiritual level, and he's saying here, that the two shall become one. He's speaking about covenant. See, this is what you don't know. He's saying when you when you when you agree to have intercourse with this person, whatever they're dealing with, whatever you're dealing with spiritually, that is now going to become one. It's an agreement. That's what it's looking for. Because especially in the New Testament, you're going to see over and over, abstain from fornication. I was said in Timothy, was said in Corinthians, it was said in Thessalonians. Why are they constantly telling us abstain from, abstain from fornication? I'm going to tell you right now. You see, the same reason why God told Abraham, I mean, Moses, tell the children of Israel, do not marry those people. Do not have no relations with them, particularly on a sexual level. Don't do it. Because you're about to pick up some spirits here, buddy. That's going to now dictate the course of this relationship. And all that you know about your God, that is going to seduce you to now go over there on that side. So God, who knew it in advance, knew the end from the beginning, now began to put these rules in place to protect Israel and what they believe as, as it relates to the God of Abraham. So he goes on to say here in verse 17, he says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is of one spirit. So let's take the same rule now and let's go back to Deuteronomy. As long as you all stay with God, you're all good. As long as you, because you're in covenant with him, because that's what all of this means, covenant. But when you walk out of this covenant, and now you went over here and you went and you had sexual relationship with somebody who probably into sorcery, who probably into whatever else, or you married them, you now polluted the covenant with God. And like I keep saying to you, you cannot serve two masters. It cannot happen. It cannot happen, all right? So he says here, verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is of one spirit. Verse 18, listen carefully. Flee who? What did he say, flee? Flee lying? I didn't read that. that you didn't read that, right? Flee what? Deceitfulness? I didn't read that either. <laughs> I didn't read that, no. Verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 6 makes it clear. Now, let's look at the context before we even read it. What is he talking about? What is he saying to you? He's starting on with this principle. He says, listen here carefully now. See, having sexual relationship with somebody and you achieving an orgasm or whatever, to you, you had a good time. And as far as you're concerned, that's the end of it with you. But the principle, the spiritual principle of the scriptures is revealing something else, something far deeper than what you thought you only achieve on a physical level. And that's why soul ties are so serious, boy. Soul ties are very, very, very serious. So from verse 15, he's telling us about covenants and how they happen. He using the analogy of a harlot, okay? He's saying if you join with a harlot, you become one. A harlot literally uh, I wouldn't say literally, but symbolically represents something foreign, something you shouldn't have any dealing with. In fact, when you read the Bible, when you hear 
uh, the word adultery and, and harlotry and whoredom. While in its natural state, it talks about a process and so on, but truly is symbolic of serving another God. So when the Bible says that Israel committed whoredom, it doesn't necessarily mean that they went out there and just slept with all of the other nations. No, it meant that they served the God of the other nations. They commit harlotry with the God of other nations. They became one with their gods. So the scripture is showing us now, it's showing us the, the genesis of soul ties, that when you decide to sleep with this person over here and sleep with that, you're, you're becoming one with what they're dealing with on the spiritual level. And as the scripture said in Deuteronomy, it says now, what that's going to do is pull you away from your God. In so much words, when you interpret that, it means now that you've joined yourself with the spirit. Now you're going to become something that you never were before. You're going to behave differently, talk differently, totally contrary for the most part, to what you originally believe as it relates to the God of Abraham. So this is why you could wear all the condoms you want. You could wear all the protection you want. That don't stop the spiritual aspect of what is being forged when you have sexual relationships with these people. All right? So verse 17 says, so 18 says, after you already tell them, be one with God, do not have sex with other people. Verse 17 says, verse 18, sorry, of 1 Corinthians 6. He says, flee fornication. He didn't say flee lying. No. He didn't say flee uh, talking bad about your neighbor. Why is he saying flee fornication? He's saying flee fornication because this is how it starts. This is the protocol. Hello for the soul tie to take up residence. D he didn't say stop lying. <laughs> no, he was very specific. He was extremely specific. Flee fornication. Very clear. Crystal clear. Because fornication, having sex outside of marriage, or even adultery, any relationships outside of a one holy matrimony between God and man, anything outside of that, he says stay from it because you're about to bring on some devils in your life, buddy, that you're going to regret. He says here, flee fornication. Then he now makes some more principles here. He said, every sin that a man do it is without the body. But he that committed, for, not lying, I want, are you reading this? He didn't say, listen what he said carefully. I get so excited. Let me calm myself down. <laughs> he said, flee fornication. Every sin that a man do it is without the body, but he that committed fornication specifically sin it against his own body. Mm, why though? Why is he sinning against his body? Why, if I tell a lie and sin against my body, uh, I deceive someone I didn't sin against my body? Well, he's about to explain it in the next verse. Why? See, sexual relations becomes the portal okay, for that spirit to come and forge the soul tie between you and that person you're engaging in intercourse with. So verse 19 says, what, question, know you not that the body is the temple of who? Of the Holy Ghost, which is in who? You, which you have of God, and ye are not of your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glory by God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in your body physically and also in your what? Spirit. Why is he making these mention? Because when I disobey, listen to this carefully now, when I disobey and I say, forget God, let me go fornicate. He's, you're violating the temple, but listen what he says next, your spirit. So I'm giving access to invisible entities that did not have access to my life before when I violate the rules as it relates to uh, uh, fornication. Taking my time here this morning. I, I got to hurry up because I got an appointment. <laughs> but I, I didn't see a part two on this because I couldn't see me wrapping all of this up here. This too heavy. Oh, yeah. 
So soul ties is initiated through covenant. In this case here, it's a sexual covenant. But you're having sex. You don't think about no covenant. You don't even see this as a covenant. You're here to please yourself. You're here to get sexual gratification. But no one has taught you the spiritual part of this, which is the most important part. Okay? So once the spirit has now become a part of your life now, see, this is where the dreams come in now, you now begin to have these dreams, which is only proof that you have a soul tie. There's a soul tie between you and the person now. So what's going to happen now? You find yourself dreaming about this lover or this person over and over and over and over again. Now, here is how you know. Here is how you know. You don't love this person. You have no real love for this person. But the thought of this person, this is how you know it's a spirit behind this. The very essence, the very, the very aroma of this person, a, a particular perfume she wears. If if you you could be in China and you walk in, in a mall with three thousand people and you smell that aroma, where do you think your mind is going to go? When that soul tie is now embedded in that person's life, and I'm telling you, these are all spirits orchestrating this. And let me, let me prove it to you. How many times you've been in a relationship and this is a spirit, you don't even know the spirit doing this. And the minute you meet that person, because the spirit is organizing all of this, it wants to create a soul tie. So that spirit of lust come on you to now put your attention towards this person. But then there will always be this song that will remind you when you initially met this person. Why, why, why is that though? Because you think it's so oh, that's normal, Kevin. Are you making a big deal? You, everything you got to make spiritually, really? <laughs> okay, then let's see. Let's see that. Let's see. The spirit is fully aware because the spirit is not a foolish being. It's a highly intelligent being. It's securing the song in this relationship for either one of the parties or even both. Why? Because this spirit knows that the day is going to come that they're going to have uh, buckheads. They know this. The spirit knows this. So the Spirit has secured the song that even when you buck heads, I'm going to always keep you all coming back to each other because I'm going to ensure that you're exposed to the song again and it's going to make you remember when you first met. And you don't know when you're picking up that phone again. Listen, listen, baby, I, I don't know what I was still talking, thinking today, but I, I miss you. I really need to see you. But the truth is, that isn't really how you feel. Why? You don't feel that way because even when you go there and you have sexual relations, you're saying to yourself, why am I even here? I don't love this person. That's how you know it's a spirit controlling the whole situation. You're grabbing your pillow and you're smelling it. This, 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 this man sent right here. I, when you find yourself obsessively into someone like that, but you know there's no true love, you know there's no none of that, you have a soul tie in your life. You're dreaming about them every second, even though you're separated, even though you're married to somebody else. Now, you know how you got it bad? I mean, you know you got it bad and you really need deliverance. And I don't know if you would tell me this, but I can tell you, because you can see you need help. If you're married right now, okay, I'm going to talk to the men first. If you're married to someone, and every time you guys have sexual relations, and the only way that you can orgasm, sir, is by thinking about this other party in order to achieve an orgasm on your wife. Homeboy, you all tie up. You are lock. And let me tell you why that's so serious, because at any moment, if that person gets you in a compromising position, or, or, or there's nothing stopping you, because there, there is a spirit that has knitted your souls together. There is a spirit that's keeping you focused on this person. Ladies, your husband is a good man. He takes care of you. He's a great lover to you. But even though he's a great lover, while he's having intercourse with you, for you to achieve for the ultimate orgasm, you think about all of the positions and the, the crazy sex stuff you did with that person who you have no feeling for, but for some reason you cannot keep them out of your mind. See, that was established a long time ago. 
That was established a long time ago. When, when you thought it was just sex, when you thought it was no big deal, all this time that spirit was knitting, but the spirit needed your cooperation. The spirit had everything in place. All of a sudden, this love at first sight garbage. This is a setup. You don't want to know nothing about their family. You don't know nothing about them. I'm in love and I'm going to pursue what I love. No, 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 no. When you see yourself like that, and because it means you're not going forward, you're stuck. But why are you stuck? Why am I obsessed about this person that I have no feeling for? I love my husband. I love my wife. We have a good relationship. Why am I thinking about this man? Why am I thinking about this woman? Why am I dreaming about them? Because there's a soul tie. And as I'm about to teach you in this, if you don't break that thing by the power of God, you in problems. You in problems. God forbid you work to a company and you all have some overseas, something that you have to go to, and somehow you buck into them. As much as you love your husband, as much as you love your wife, you didn't happen here. Yeah, you can try to fight it off. Yeah, you can try to resist it. But the spirits that's controlling it is now going to upgrade the lust and the evil affection towards that person. It's going to flood your mind with all of the sexual acts you did before when you did it in the car, when you did it in the office and you're almost, almost caught. All of these things are to lure you in to achieve not your objective, but the objective of the spirit that's making you believe that these are your thoughts. I'm talking to somebody today. Now, you could play all holy on this line today and act like you never had these things. That's on you, buddy. <laughs> okay? That on you. But I'm telling you right now, I, 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 this here is real. Okay? Now, let's go to Colossians. We can go a little deeper now. Let's go to Colossians. Let me get my little notes here. Because I can go a little deeper, okay? And I hope we know children here. And if you all got your little children, send them to preschool, send them somewhere, because we're about to get a little deep here. I tell you before, I'm your regular preacher, so don't expect the regular from me. <laughs> Colossians. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Why are you always having dreams about your ex-lover? Why are you, you, your husband right next to you? Why are you in the morning time sitting at the table having a cup of coffee and you're in a daze while your husband is making you breakfast? Okay, you're already three years in this marriage and your mind is on a journey with your ex-lover. Why is it that you're in the living room watching a particular movie and guess what happens? The song that your former lover the, form, the song that you all met on, that's playing. So you're right there. And your husband have zero idea that you're just relishing in this thought of when you first met this person. And the more you entertain that spirit, the more that spirit is going to, I mean, literally flood you with uh, inordinate affection. Okay? Now, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. This is Paul, the apostle, speaking to the church of Colossians. And what I want to make clear here before we read it, he's talking to a group of believers. He's talking to people who've already converted to Jesus Christ. So he's not talking to people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus. Excuse me, these are people who already accepted Christ. Now watch what he says here. Colossians 3, verse 5 says... Mortify, that word means to change, that word means to upgrade, that word means to tweak or to make different. He says, mortify, therefore, your members, he's talking about your physical body now, your hand, your eye, your, all of the other stuff. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, we see this word again, uncleanness. It, circle this word, inordinate affection. Oh, yeah. Now, I wrote the meaning of that down. Inordinate affection speaks of evil desire and lust. To be obsessed with somebody or something. But in this case, we're talking about a, a person. 
So he's telling you to modify. So he's telling these believers. So it's, oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Because he is talking to believers. And this is going to resonate with a lot of you right now. Kevin, I hear in you, man. And it's making so much sense because I'm a Christian, Kevin. I've been a Christian for the fast five, four, three years, two months, six months. And Kevin, this sexual desire on me like nobody business. But they're telling you, you don't have a curse on you. They're telling you ever since you accepted Jesus, you don't listen to Kevin, you're free of the curse. Yeah? Well, that ain't what I read in here, what Paul telling a, 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 a building of believers. He says, listen, believers, you need to start making some changes now. Yes, you accepted Jesus Christ. You did that. You did that. Now, you got to put in the work. Yeah, Christ made it accessible for you to use his name to break those curses. But don't believe that because you accepted Christ, you are automatically expunged from every curse. You know, no ever telling you that you need to go get safe. You need to go back to Bible school. You need to go read their Bibles. Because Paul is talking to a church who know Jesus. And he's telling them, hey, you need to modify. You need to change. You can't be doing things the way you used to do under the banner of Jesus Christ. And he says, now you need to stop fornicating. I told you my story before. I told you when I got saved, I had a major problem with fornication. Well, I had a problem before fornication. And after I got saved, it got even worse. You know, you're guilty, you repent, you're back at, listen, you, you repent, you know tomorrow you can do it again. You know this, you don't plan this. Oh God, please forgive me, Jesus, oh Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord, I'm so sorry. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock, we can be at this again. <laughs> I'm making light of it, but it can be very discouraging, very frustrating because you have so many people who live a form of godliness. Oh, no, you cannot be. You fornicated? Oh, my God. You you sure you safe? You sure you know Jesus? Because it sounds as if you need to get saved. No, brother, I am saved. You mean I need to be delivered? That's what you mean. That's what you mean. See, don't mix up saved with being delivered. I am safe. I do. I have accepted Jesus Christ. I did that but I got a problem in this area right here. I got a lust thing going on. I got a generational curse of this on my life. And the only you could tell me is I need to get saved again. And the thing about it, more than likely they got the same problem, you know. So I don't listen to them, boy. I, I so thank God I come from that fake foolishness. I thank you, Jesus, Lord. I, oh God, I thank you, I was delivered. That's why the Bible says to us, my favorite scripture, Proverbs 11 verse 9b, what does it say? Through knowledge shall the who, who? The just be delivered. The just will be who? Us, the righteous. So that scripture is saying to you, forensically, that even the righteous, the saved ones, got issues. But the Bible is saying, like what Kevin is doing right now, he's giving you the knowledge to be delivered from it. But you're not automatically delivered when you accept Jesus Christ. No. Jesus Christ put the things in place for it to happen. But now you need to do the work. Come with that nonsense talking foolishness. So, he said to modify, modify your members. Listen to this carefully now. Modify, verse 5 of Colossians 3, therefore your members, which are upon the earth, stop fornicating, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, now I wrote this word down, evil concupiscence, concu, concu, Concupiscence, concupiscence, that's it. <laughs> well, last night, I was practicing, I said, now, like, when I go talk to these people today, I need to know this word. Can't be no teaching, can't pronounce these words. Thank you. But anyway, concupiscence, concupiscence. And what does that mean? Strong sexual desires. But he prefixed that word with evil. Let me break this baby down for you. See, if I have strong, if I have concupiscence towards my wife, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with me having strong sexual desires towards Deidre. But he prefixed the word evil there, meaning that you're having this desire outside of a holy matrimony. You just obsess. See, all of this here now points to soul ties. You just got to have sex. And you looking at this person, you don't care if they have HIV, you don't care. Not all you thinking about, I got to get the whole, the, the whole, in fact, your, that spirit is just 
putting those flashcards in front of you, different sexual acts and you orgasming, you're all doing it over here and you're doing it where you're almost caught. All of this, just like a person who went to pornography, all of this just, just riling you up. So what is it doing now? Remember the other night I spoke about uh, the spirit that influences or coerce you to do things. That's what they do. They persuade you. So that's what's happening here right now. The spirit is persuading or incur it cannot make you. It cannot violate. Just like how God will not violate your will, evil spirits cannot violate your will. So what they do, they, they persuade, they encourage, they inspire, they coerce. So you're in the office working with this guy. You're a married woman. Or you're man, you're in the office working with this lady. And you just have this sexual desire to watch. And now you don't know her, meaning you're, you've never dated before, none of that. But you never challenge the thought. Remember the scripture says to us, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, I believe it is. It says, cast down all imagination and anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And all that simply means is that anything that that scripture is telling you not to do or do, then you need to be in compliance with it. If you do what it tells you not to do, which is the knowledge of God, then whatever it is, sexual desires towards someone, you're exalting that now above God. God, I hear you saying no fornicate, but guess what? She look good. God, you won't see the same. <laughs> this, see, this devil just working you 24-7. So now you subdue the things of God in the order in which God wants you to operate in. And now the sexual desire wants this person. You're not fighting it anymore. So the spirit understands the rules. Very legalistic. We got Kevin now. Now what we can do is make her tomorrow when she comes to work. And let her some of that cleavage out or, or, you know, let her put on something tight. And, you know, so in your mind, you say, I don't want nobody to see me looking. That's how evil this thing is. I don't want nobody see me looking because, you know, I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a, I'm the quiet one here. But the truth is, even though my physical eyes are, are not looking at her, I'm seeing her in my mind, even though I'm looking over here. I talk to somebody. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you here. See, Going on the days you try to act like these things don't ex exist. And this is the reason why we've been beating you down all these years. And this is the reason why you couldn't overcome it all these years. All right, I got like, uh, I have an appointment at 11.30. So I'm, I'm going to definitely do a part two to this today though. When I finish that appointment, I'm going to finish this up because this you got to hear this. You got to hear this. So, so you're looking, you're not looking physically, but you already see the, the guy, the tall guy, handsome, and you're not, you don't want to be obvious and watching him all the time on the job. But the truth is, you don't have to see him physically no more because the spirit is now putting images in your mind. See, all of this is the making of the soul time. All the spirit wants to do to put the icing on the cake is for you to have sexual relations. This is why the scripture says, flee, run, go in the opposite direction as it relates to fornication. Get out of it, because the day you do that, the day you do that, you've just now allowed a spirit to tie a knot between you and this person. So you give him one day, you decide to have intercourse with this person. You're married. You feel bad. Lord, well, how could I do this? But it's not going to end there. And you know what's wrong. You go home, you're guilty. You feel out of it. You cannot tell your partner right now, because this, this could probably ruin your marriage. So, did, so all kind of stuff going on with you now. All kind of stuff going on now. So you know the Spirit is going to tell you now? Because remember the Spirit pulling the strings here. You gave up your right to this when you decide to have intercourse. So as time go on, this is where it becomes interesting. Again, the dreams are going to come, man. The dreams are going to become relentless. You're going to have sexual dreams like nobody business. You are going to dream the most vile, the most wicked sexual acts ever. And don't necessarily mean that it's going to be with the same person. You probably will see with different people, but the truth is what you're seeing here is the spirit that's controlling what's going on between you and this person. So the spirit is now putting more stuff in the, in the mix here. Yeah. So you become obsessed with this person. 
This person could curse you out, treat you like a dog, tell you all kind of stuff. You as a married woman, you no good this, get your, you know what, blah, blah, blah. And you, you crawl over with your hair down, but you can't get them with your mind though. No matter how bad they treat you, the minute you pick up that phone, listen, I will see you. Oh, but I'm with my husband. And three o'clock X, Y, Z, boom, hang up the phone. The spirit running the show. It ain't him, you know. He ain't running no show, you know. You think he's running the show, but he ain't running no show. See, the spirit has already prepped the whole thing even before you guys had intercourse. It pl placed everything there spiritually and mentally so that even when you try to pull away, even when you see that man with another woman and you're married, you, you're infuriated. So what happens now? Spirit is going to take it to another level. And what is the next level, Mr. Ewing? You begin to lose desire for your true partner. Oh, don't play like you know what they're talking about. Yeah. So your husband comes home, you're washing the dishes, he comes behind you, put his arms around you and kiss you on the cheek, and you're like, oh, why are you behaving like this? I just don't feel like being bothered. I don't feel like being bothered. You don't even realize what you're doing. You don't even realize the effect that this thing is causing in your home. Why? Why? Because that spirit that I have you two guys knitted together is running the show here. But you don't notice. If you don't know it from a spiritual level, you will never notice. How? How you can know? How? You begin to lose your desire for your partner, your husband, your wife. You're not interested in doing, and the more you see this person who you've had this little fling with or whatever, with other people and moving on with your life, you envy that because you want to be that person on their arm. You want to be that person on their motorcycle. You want to be that person on their convertible car with your hair flying over the place. You, you want to be that person. You know this is wrong. You see, but you cross the line now. So now you go to bed. You don't want to have sex with your husband, your wife. And if you do, in order for you to achieve sexual pleasure, you might have to go and poison X over here. So that's why he said, flee fornication. Do not forge covenant with them. Do not let your sons marry their daughters. Do not let their daughters marry your son. Don't, no form of agreement. And he's not just talking about the physical marriage. He's talking about the spiritual components that will now be forged when you do covenant with them. I hope you're listening to me. I hope you're listening to me. I hope you're listening to me. You know. <laughs> Let's go back here. Paul said to the Christians in the church of Colossians, he said, y'all put a cap on the fornication. Put a cap on the inordinate affection. Put a cap on these strong sexual desires that you had. Deal with it through the blood of Jesus Christ. Knock these things down. If not, they're going to knock you down. Deal with it, or else they can deal with you. Let's be real here. Let's be real here. He says here, mortify. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication. This is Colossians 3 verse 5. He says, fornication. Remember I told you about the law of first mention? The way that it is mentioned first in the Bible, that's the order or the protocol in which you follow. So the first thing he mentions here, because what he's saying is this, this is the gateway. This is the portal. This is the avenue where everything is going to become legal. At first, they just could suggest. They suggest sleep with this person, have sex with them, lust after them, look at pornography. They only could suggest. You, you, they cannot make you do it. But when you engage in fornication, it's shutting everything down. Click, click. You lock up. You're now subject to the spirit because it's already put its hooks, its tentacles in you. Now that spirit is going to now call the shots. Why talking to somebody today? Y'all can play save all y'all want. I talking to somebody because I've been this road in terms of when, when I first got, uh, when I became a Christian in, in 1996, May 17. I didn't have no idea the road ahead. And, and I told in one video, 
and, and you see for me, I'm transparent. I, I fornicated more as a Christian. That's how bad it was than as a believer. But then there was a generational curse of this from my father. Aside from everything else. But nobody was teaching me this. Nobody telling me this. No, but all they saying to you, stay safe and act the part. Look holy. Forget what's going on inside. Oh, man, no, you can't do that, man. You can't. You cannot. You cannot run from the reality of that. Yes, you want to live right. Yes, you want to live for God. And God, you on your knees, some of you just last night fornicated and you love Jesus more than hog love slop, right? You, you pine and Jesus, please take this from me. But the reality is, you know on the weekend you can be all locked up in this dude arms. You know on the weekend you can be locked up in this woman arms. You, you don't know this. Now you're thinking you're fooling God. No, 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 no. See, reality can kick in one day. Oh, yeah. Reality is going to kick in one day. But I'm teaching you how to recognize and, and understand these things. Mm -hmm. So he says here, let's go back here now. He talked about inordinate affection. It's an evil desire. Inordinate affection is an unhealthy and obsessive attachment to a person or thing that manifests through uncomfortable love. You call in this love. I just, I just couldn't. Listen, I know, we, I know I'm married, but I just couldn't wait to be with you, man. You don't, you don't care about your husband. You don't care about your wife. You don't care about none of that. The Bible says that obsessive desire to, to be with someone, to, 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 to become caught up with them sexually provides this... Well, not the Bible, it's the definition, sorry. It gives this un, an uncomfortable love, meaning that it, it isn't love. It's eros love. The Greek love means sexual love. Meaning that I, I'm saying love, but the truth is I love the sex we have in here. I love these different positions. I love how creative you are. I love how you rough me up. I love that. But the truth is, I, I, I wouldn't marry you. I mean, even if I did, this isn't going to last because once the sexual part would have worn off, I just see you as the regular person that I always saw you as. So what does that mean? There's a spirit involved here. But it's, it's downloading all of this evil information into your mind. Sexual information, that is, about this person to why you should be here. But the truth is, you truly love your husband, you know, but you have no desire for him right now. You truly love your wife, but you have no desire. Some of the most common cases of this is... Uh, where you will find a man, this is how you could recognize a soul tie in this particular example I'm about to show you. Just check out my time here. And that is where a man would have left his wife, right? Doing very well. He have a child with his wife. He has a good job. She has a good job. They have a good home. They're doing very well. He found himself in this adulterous relationship. But the lady who he's having this relationship with is far, she's nowhere a fraction as beautiful as his wife. She doesn't work, so he has to pay her bills. You have to take care of these, excuse me, these are five uh, PCA children she got here, right? <laughs> With five different daddies. He's here. He don't like being there with her. He's uncomfortable. All of these kids making noise. It's draining his pocket. But for some reason, he cannot leave. Now, his wife, honey, listen, the water bill is due. is $30. What you don't let me know for? Huh? I have to pay everything? Hold on, buddy. But you paying? Hello? Soul tie. See, the, soul, the spirit that's created that soul tie between him and that woman who he's not supposed to be with is, is making him focus. Now, true it is, he's miserable there. Let me take this a little deeper, man. I got a few minutes here before I wrap up, man, because I got to finish this up today. Let me take this a little deeper. Let me take this a little deeper. All right? Uh, I think I told you this story before. I try to remember the book I read it out of. I can't remember the book. I have the book here, but I can't remember it. Probably when I do the part two today, I'll, I'll bring the book. Anyway, I think I told you about the story before. This African pastor was, was telling this story about this guy who just went totally berserk one day, cussing carrying on with his wife. In fact, the neighbors had to call the police because he was about to kill the wife. They brought in the police, right? And the guy is just totally crazy. He's saying he doesn't know this woman, meaning the wife, what she's doing in his home. 
So they thinking now he's going crazy. Why is this guy behaving this way? Right? But she knew why. Anyway, when it was all said and done, she confessed that 25 years prior to all of that, they met. And she loved him. But of course, he didn't feel the same way about her. And she really, really, she became obsessed with this guy. So she decided to go to the, the witch doctor, right? So they did a whatever. They did a sacrifice, or whatever the case may be. And the deal was every year she was supposed to come back to redo this thing. 25 years later, because every year he would call her to say, hey, don't you forget, uh, you got to come do this thing and, and bring that little thing. Don't bring that little money when you come. Don't forget that either. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, after 25 years, she figured, you know what? We have two or three children now. They're grown. There's no need for me to do this no more. So the guy called her. He said, listen to me carefully. You better come here now. She didn't go. So because she didn't go there to renew the spell that was on him, the spirits that was assigned as a result of that spell had to leave him. So now his true spiritual eyes are open. He could see clearly. So in his mind now, what's going on here? And the fake desires that he had that were uh, perpetrated by the spirit that was giving him that feeling and that desire to water, that all gone now because all of that was perpetrated by the spiritual components involved. So the guy going totally crazy, cussing and carrying on. And of course, they got a divorce in the end. So you see, those things don't last. But but what I the reason why I told you that, the reason why I told you that is to show you the spiritual components behind these things. And and your guys listen to me right now. If you obsessed with a person, if you if you, if you in a relationship where that relationship is is totally unbalanced, you're doing more, you're paying more, and the person is nonchalant, they don't care, they don't have a problem, you have a problem. And there's a spirit, there's a force behind you that's that's making you take into account components that is superficial to this relationship. You couldn't imagine somebody else having sex with them. The thought of that will drive you crazy. Okay? You so obsessed with them, you circling around their house three, four o'clock in the morning, you riding around like you some kind of bring security. <laughs> When you find yourself doing those things, there is a spirit involved. And you need to break that spirit. You need to shut that down. You need to shut that down because it's going to eventually shut you down. When you lose all shame and desire, when it comes to expressing how you feel about this person, even though you're with somebody else, even though you're in a committed relationship, you've got a soul tie on you, sweetie. When you could smell the, the scent of this person, they could be in Timbuktu. And that spirit just sent a whiff of that around your nostrils. And you go into La La Land again like you just had a hit of cocaine. Soul tie involved there. When you lay down and you sleep and you're just dreaming about this person over and over and your husband right next to you. Don't know what's going on in your head over there. You got a soul tie, my friend. Inordinate affection, according to Colossians 3 and 7. The, the, the aggressive desire to be with someone who you have no true feelings for, but all of the feelings here are perpetrated by foul, wicked, evil spirits that gain uh, access when you decide to fornicate with that place person. You all hearing me? I hope you all listen to me. And again, this isn't limited to no witchcraft. No. It's a spirit. You could be in the food store. You could be doing uh, your daily stuff. So, so see, the, 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 the thing is, when that spirit comes, you, you don't see it. You, you don't audibly hear the voice. Why? Because the spirit is speaking to your spirit. Yeah, just like how you say the spirit of the Lord spoke to you. You didn't hear God physically. No, you didn't hear him audibly. But there's something within your spirit that lines up with the scriptures. This, this, Satan ain't going to tell me this. Satan ain't going to tell me, go and bless Sister Mary over there. 
I know nothing was going on in Mary's life. Go bless Sister Mary with $1,500. And when I finally go to do it, come to find out Mary didn't have no food in the cupboard for the children, none of that. But yet I didn't hear an audible voice. It's the Spirit of the Lord speaking to my spirit. It is no different. The same rules apply on the demonic side. So what's happening now? That evil spirit, the spirit of suggestion is just, see how good she looking at her. You in the food store now, you're you married man. Huh? See how nice she look? Watch how she picking up that cabbage. Now you know your wife don't pick up cabbage like that, right? <laughs> so, I'm making light of this, but I'm telling you, this is how this evil force work. And when you entertain this, when you entertain this, boy, nothing good could come out of that. Nothing. But you got to challenge. You, you, you have to challenge this. Let's look at, let's look at, uh, let's look at, uh, I got a few more minutes. Let's look at, I really don't want to end this, but I, I promise this person I have to speak to them. First Thessalonians 4 and 5. I have a lot to cover here, and I'm going to, I promise you, I'm going to come back to do this today. I promise you, because I, I cannot let this. First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 5 says, what does it say? It used that same word again, concupiscence, concupiscence. And that means strong sexual desire, right? So it says, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. I talk to you, concupiscence means strong sexual desires. But the Bible refers to it, like it said in Colossians, evil. So if it refers to it as evil concupiscence, if it prefixes it with evil, then there's, there's good. But the good is only uh, so in a legitimate uh, holy matrimony. So there's nothing wrong with having strong sexual desires for your wife. Now, I'll put a little check on that. I'll put a little check on that. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm looking at this time, it's 11.24. I got to wrap this up right here. And I know you all don't want me to, but I have to. <laughs> I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to. A person, I can leave this nugget. A person... Uh, who is addicted to pornography, but they're married. And this is where you have the, ex uh, the exception. When I said to you, concupi concupiscence, whatever, is strong sexual desires. There's nothing wrong with that in a holy matrimony, except for this. A person who is addicted to pornography, and they're so obsessed that everything they see on those pornography films they want to force their partner to engage. But the truth is there's a spirit behind them. And if the partner doesn't comply, they become angry and they masturbate or worst case scenario, they go seek sexual pleasures or someone to fulfill these evil desires that has been inculcated into their understanding. They try to go outside for this now. So evil concupiscence can be achieved even in a marriage under those circumstances. Y'all listening to me? I hope y'all listening to me. So when sex is such a major tool, sex is so powerful, and this is why you see so much uh, uh, sexual uh, scandals in the church, sexual scandals in politics, sexual scandals in, in, in families, because see, that's the gateway, that's the portal, that is where that spirit say, woo, I'm, I've arrived and I'm in charge here now. I run the show here now. So you, you, you got to know, you got to understand what you're dealing with. So if you don't know that, you're going to have a, a major problem. So watch this now. Watch this. I want to show you. I got four minutes. My Lord, this is, this is evil, man. This is wicked. I got four minutes. And, uh. I gotta be a man of my word. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta end right here. I have to end right here. But folks, I hate doing this, but we're gonna do. I'm gonna do when I'm done because this is the only uh, appointment that I have for the day. When I'm done with this call, I'm gonna be back here 
to do part two because I have a lot to cover. I have a lot of scriptures here. In fact, we haven't even scratched the surface of this yet. I just messing around with the cosmetic part of it. But I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do part two. So I'm going to change the heading on this to part one. So when we come back to part two, and we're going to get really, really deep into this because I really want you guys to walk away with a major understanding. And you're not alone. And that's what this devil is trying to do. Or you're, you're masturbating or you're committing adultery, you're fornicating, and nobody knows in the church. So you figure as long as they see you wearing the holy stuff or playing the holy part, don't let church people send you to hell. Yeah? If you're doing fool, then own up to the fool you're doing to God because he's the one who's watching you 24-7. Okay? And, and, I'm, and that's why I share my personal stories with you to show you that I am no different from anybody else. When I, I had my time of that, I've been delivered from that. And I'm showing you how to be delivered. The, the, the most successful way that a spirit will have the upon on you is to place you in a corner, to isolate you and to make you believe that this is only happening to you. You would be amazed to know how many of your peers, how many of your church members, how many of your family members, how many of your colleagues are going through the exact same thing. But you afraid to tell them. you scared to tell them. You know why you scared to tell them? Because you figure they're looking holy all the time, always praising Jesus and doing all of those cabbage patch in the church. So you figure, hey, how, how dare I go and tell them that? And for the most part, I don't blame you for not telling them because a lot of them will condemn you even though they're doing it. Because in their mind, they figure, well, you ain't seen me doing it, so I can condemn you. I got the right to do that. But I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end right here. And uh, I'm going to come back probably in the next two, or, two hours or three hours. I don't know. Depending on the call. And then we're going to take this to the next level. Man, I love you guys. And I get like almost 2,000 people then watching here. So be back with me in the next two hours, two and a half hours. I say three hours. Because I don't know where this call is going to go. And... Uh, We'll take it from there. God bless you, and we'll be back with part two.